Hey everyone, I thought I'd share some ideas on how to prepare your entry into the WPPI annual print competition. If you're a seasoned veteran, I'm going to shed some light onto some of the new rules that might affect your entry. And if you're a newcomer, you might have no idea where to start on how to prepare your mount for your print entry. So let me uh, show you. So here is what is considered an eligible entry into the competition. Your entry must be 16 by 20 inches. So here we have 20 inches vertically and 16 inches horizontally. Now, your entry can be either vertical or horizontal. And uh, in this for, case, for example, we have a horizontal image on a vertical mat. So that's more than acceptable. Now, I want to bring attention to the exact size you need to prepare your print uh, for. So I want to refer to the website. Now, if you're following along with me on this tutorial, of course, you'll be on the uh, WPBIAwards.com website. I'm now looking at the official rules under specifications and here it says this images may be submitted in any shape and size on a 16 by 20 mount board with a minimum image size of 10 inches or 25.4 centimeters on the longest length in other words the longest length of this image for example is the horizontal side and if I put my tape measure up to it and we have 10 inches so that's more than acceptable as far as the shortest length of your print uh, let me read the rules now again. The shortest length of your print cannot be less than 4 inches or 10.1 centimeters. So the shortest length of this image, for example, is the vertical side. And as we can see here, it is uh, almost 7 inches, and that's more than acceptable. In other words, you can prepare your entry as an 8x10, 7x10, or even a 4x10. But a 3 by 10 inch print is not acceptable. A 5x7 or a 6x8 or a 6x9 inch print is not acceptable. So now let me break down exactly uh, how this is created, like how this print and mount is created. Now I'm sure you would have seen and you would understand how an actual uh, print uh, can be framed as we can see the examples in my studio here in Melbourne. So we have the print, we have the mount and then we have the frame. So what we normally use are the mount board that you normally um, comes with a frame. So. What we have here is a blank piece of 16 by 20 mount board, nothing fancy. This actually, uh, in my example I'm giving you today, is uh, the, the baseboard. This is going to be the backing for the actual prints and entry. So I normally have two pieces of 16 by 20 mount board. And then what we do is we cut an opening to actually suit the actual print. And I've actually cut this open so you can actually see what I'm showing you here. This is actually uh, the, the, the baseboard, 16 by 20 baseboard. And on the front of it, um, as you can see, we have the print stuck right behind. Okay. Now make sure that if you're actually putting the adhesive on the print, put it in a place where it's not in the middle of the print because you might find that if it's double sided tape or uh, quite a thick glue, that you know the print might actually show up those little ripples on the front, which is not going to be a great to, to judge. So like I said, you, normally two pieces of mount board stuck together and that makes it nice and solid and rigid and that's an acceptable entry. Now your baseboard can be self-adhesive mount board. It could even be uh, like foam core as you might see that there, little foam core that might be that, uh, that very light material that a lot of sign writers use for example. But you've got your 16 by 20 mount board with a mat with your opening and that's an acceptable entry. Now make sure as well that when you prepare your entries, your prints, that they're probably a little bit darker than you normally used to preparing your prints that you would sell to clients, for example. To, re to actually look at the website here, I just want to show you something here. It says here, there'll be a new system used to judge the prints in 2014. I've done a lot of research and there's actually a really cool uh, desktop viewer that we're using. So please click on the link on the official rules page to see the actual viewer that we're using. Uh, it's, uh, it's new for 2014. Now the light intensity that your prints will be viewed under is equivalent of an exposure set to 100 ISO, 120th of a second um, at f2.8. So if you measure your exposure under those conditions, then your print You'll, you'll be able to see exactly what uh, conditions the judges will be viewing your image at as well. So just be wary of that. So like I said, most images are usually printed a little bit darker than what you would normally be, be used to seeing prints at. So just be wary of that. All right. Now let me show you some other things here. We've got, uh, if you are entering a square print, for example, see how we said that 
your print must be 10 inches or no shorter than 10 inches on the longest length. Of course, being square, both sides would be 10 inches, for example. So that would be an acceptable entry. Now, another thing I want to show you here is that, you know, you can actually mount your print many different ways. In this case, we've got the mount covering up the photograph. And in this case, for example, we have a little bit of negative space surrounding the photograph and then the mounts. Just make sure that the viewable image size is 10 inches minimum of the longest length and no shorter than four inches on the shortest length as we, dis as, as we discussed before. Okay, so here is an example of an unacceptable entry and it will be disqualified. As you can see here, for example, the longest length is the horizontal length and that is only seven inches. So that would be automatically disqualified. It would be a crying shame that if you had an incredible image and you actually printed it um, you know, shorter than, than it should be, uh, that would be just a, a heartbreaking for, for you and also heartbreaking for WPBI because we want all entries to be successfully uploaded to us and given to us so that every print gets its due respect and due score and, uh, and that would be great for everybody. All right, now another thing that I want to bring attention to is this. When you actually print your entry form, you must stick it on the top left of, your, of the back of your mount. This not only gives us an idea obviously of the, of the entrant and the, the address and all the particulars that we basically need, but it also gives us an understanding of exactly how you want your image to be presented, either vertically or horizontally. So if you print, if you actually stick your, your entry form on the back of your mount like this, for example, then your entry will be judged like this. Now that orientation is quite obvious, but what about the, uh, examples of say, uh, landscape images or reflections where people want to inverse the image or something that's abstract or a landscape taken from a bird's eye angle and view. Um, we may not know exactly what your intention was and which orientation it is it, to be viewed as. So my advice to you is like I said, be very particular. Once you get your print like this and you mount it, turn it over like that and actually stick your entry form exactly in the orientation that you want it to be judged. So be wary of that. Okay, something else that I want to bring to your attention is this. Um, actually, in Australia, in the AIPP, uh, we are forced to have print cases like this, for example. But they're a really a cool, easy way um, to protect your images and actually uh, submit your prints with. So just to show you what it basically is. So it's, it's, uh, it accommodates 16 by 20 prints and uh, you open it up, so just open up the lid and it comes, comes with some foam board as you can basically see to protect in between your entries and it, uh, it attaches basically like with some clips and some straps and it protects your images beautifully. Now um, do a Google search in your part of the world, um, I would probably Google something like 16 by 20 print competition cases or something like that and I'm sure you will find uh, uh, heaps of examples that would be, uh, be good to look at. So guys, I hope that that sheds some light as to all the things that you need to look out for. It's not rocket science. Once you know how, it's, it's pretty easy. But pay attention to the sizes more notably and uh, make sure the overall size is 16 by 20 inches. My recommendation is don't be too fancy with your mount, um, either with its presentation or with its color. In terms of color, I wouldn't say perhaps do anything other than um, a, a, either a white or an off-white mat unless the color of the mat contributes to the message that you're trying to convey with your image. So often when judges see something like a black mat or a brown mat or something, it tends to deaden and flatten the image. Unless that mount um, actually contributes to the message that you're trying to convey to the viewer, then I would suggest that when in doubt, go with that. Go simple, go clean, let the image speak for itself. And my recommendation too is, I, I don't want to see these red borders and, and pink borders and things like that around each image or a stroke as we call it in Photoshop. Um, keep it very, very simple. Make sure the image stands out and it's all about the image. In fact, the mounting almost should go unnoticed. It's uh, like I say, uh, said before, is that when you look at a print like that, for example, it's framed uh, in a studio or hanging on a wall, um, the, I guess the, the, the better it's framed, the more it goes unnoticed. You're there to look at the actual print, not the frame. So keep it simple, prepare your entries early, make sure that you have plenty of time to look at your images, make sure that the, the images are free of dust and free of scratches. And uh, I wish you all the best of luck for the competition. And, uh, and remember, one of my favorite mantras is that you don't have to be best. All you have to do is be better than last week. Thank you so much and we'll see you soon.